Esquimalt Lagoon, a migratory bird sanctuary. Today you'll notice plenty of Canada geese, and I didn't see very many other birds, although I did hear seagulls. This is a beautiful spot. We are looking straight side right now. You'll notice that there are lots of freighters out there. When aircraft carriers arrive, they anchor out there and they look very large. The Esquimalt Navy base is north of here, and when their ships sail on long tours in the ocean, they sometimes sail past here, and the family and the parents gather at the other end of the lagoon where there's a washroom and have snacks while the ship sails fairly close to shore and then powers off like a motorboat, although it's a huge vessel. Very impressive. Someone has made sculptures out of driftwood. There are many different birds and animals that you can see, and they're really quite intriguing. You will see them as I walk by them near the end of the video. Besides swimming on the ocean side, and the swimming, it's cold. The ocean is never really warm here. My son and I, we have gone crabbing here. We go out on paddle boards and drop two traps and let them sit for two hours and maybe catch one or two crabs in the traps. Many people come just to enjoy the view. In the winter, it, the winds can be quite harsh and people will sit in the car and watch the waves. But in the summer, people walk the beach and there, is a lot of, there are a lot of dog walk, walkers here too. On the other side, there are people who are birders, I guess, and they come to capture the pictures of the bird. And there are quite a few different birds that arrive here. So it is a nice park to be in. On the lagoon side, on the hill, is Royal Roads University. It used to be a two-year naval academy. Once finished here, the students went on to Ontario and Quebec to finish their four-year degree. And I guess they became captains. Captains in the armed forces, but lieutenants in the Navy. The grounds of Royal Roads are beautiful. They have several gardens worth going to. Not as good as Bouchard Gardens, but they're definitely worth touring and they're free. So if you can't afford Bouchard Gardens, that is a good place to go. I buy a yearly pass to Bouchard Gardens. It's cheaper and when I'm out that way, I always pop in. They have a good coffee shop and I enjoy drinking coffee there. It is a beautiful surrounding. Being on the beach, it has reminded me of a couple of ocean stories. The first one, when we were young, or when I was young, we used to catch ooligans or smelt on a beach. Not this here, I don't think you're allowed to catch them. And the fisheries are closed down. But they are a delicious food. They're high in vitamin B and D. It reminds me in Bella Coola, where I lived for a while, the natives used to catch them and they called them candlefish. And it was one of their staple foods. The oil was used to actually burn for candle and give them light. But they also ate them like they were candy. And they are very delicious. They would smoke them. In June, most years, the girls from about grade four up used to stop coming to school because they had to help process the candlefish for their yearly supply. The boys, was, they didn't go and do that. They, they did help in the fisheries, but they usually were a little older Grade, about grade seven and up. I was teaching at the time, and it was really funny to be in an empty school. The, at that time, the province ran the school year. Really, they should have shut down the school 
and restarted it after the smelt had run or the ulagan had run and allowed the children to get a better education because that that is part of their life and it should have been done that way for them now school districts can set their own school year Bellacoola is a little bit funny as there's only Bellacoola, I believe. There used to be Ocean Falls in the same school district, but I'm not sure it's there anymore. So they could set the school year to allow for the smelt and ulagon fishing. By the way, Bellacoola and the other little village, Hagensburg, are breathtakingly beautiful but most people won't see them because they're 300 kilometers off the main highway from Williams Lake. But if you like fishing, that's the place to go. The river fishing is so good, I even caught fish there. Fishing is a great way to be out in nature. You really do feel like you're part of nature when you're out there fishing, or at least I do. I went to my aunt's funeral just last weekend, and my cousin and my brother reminded me of two beach stories that I thought were pretty good. We were at Long Beach. It's a national park now, and rightfully so, but back then it was just a big beach that anyone could camp along. My cousin's family came over from Edmonton and my dad and my mother decided that we should go camping on Long Beach. So we drove up there and we had a huge army tent. We set up the tent by the logs on the beach and it was, seemed like a good spot to us. And that day, that day all of us kids wanted to go swimming. And Long Beach is an open ocean beach where the waves are huge and there are rip tides. But we were all kind of prairie people. My parents were anyway. The water was cold, something only kids would really enjoy. The waves were big, but there was a rip tide. And my cousin, she started to be pulled along the beach by the tide. I had to go out and pull her in. Heed the warnings. When it says riptide, it can be very dangerous. They can pull you out and you can't get in. It's a very difficult situation to be in. But we managed to be safe. And it's a beautiful beach. That night, we went to sleep in our tents on the beach. As I said before, our parents were from the prairies and they weren't used to tides. So as we were sleeping that night, the tide came in. And next thing you know, we're all having to be roused up to get out of the tent as the tide was lapping at the tent door and would have come and made us all really soaking wet that night. There is no overnight tenting at Esquimalt Lagoon, but I guess you could get your towels wet like any seashore. If you put your towels too close to the beach, and then, well, the tide will come in. As I said before, the water is cold on the open ocean side of the lagoon. The first time I went swimming there, I drove down, parked my car, and got out I had my swimming suit on, so I was able to walk down to the beach. And as I was walking down to the beach, people were going, you're not going to go in, are you? That's how cold it was. And I looked along the beach, and there was a child swimming maybe 500 meters down the beach from me, but only really sw swimming and wading. I did get in that day, but it is cold, and it's not a place where very many people like to swim. And the same thing with Long Beach. Not very many people like to swim, unless, of course, you like to surf, and then you'll have 
the wetsuit on, and all there are better places to swim around Victoria, better beaches, and there are lakes too, and rivers if you go out to Souk. Now I'd like to re read you one of my favorite poems. For a long time, I thought it was from the, this poem that I memorized was from the rhyme of the ancient mariner, and I could only remember a few lines from it. But I looked it up, and it was the poem Sea Fever by John Maysfield that I had memorized. So, Sea Fever by John Maysfield. I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea in the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spoon and the sea gulls crying. I must go down to the seas again, to the vagrant gypsy life, to the gull's way and the whale's way where the wind's like a wetted knife. And all I ask is a merry yawn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trick's over. I really loved that poem as a teenager, but I did mix it up with the rhyme of the ancient mariner. And the bird, the albatross, was always seemed to be on my mind, but had nothing to do with the poem Sea, Be sea Fever by John Maysfield. Thinking about birds, I decided to look up how many bird species have been found at Esquimalt Lagoon? And there have been 233 different species that have been found there. Here are some of the rare birds that are found there if you're at all interested in birding. And the first one listed is you, the Eurasian widgeon as a rare bird. Then the Hooded Murgensur, the Black Oyster Catcher, the American Golden Plover, and the Common Tern. Last listed as a rare bird was the Western Meadow Lark. There is also a list of the birders and how many and how many birds each of them has found. There are a top 10 list there. One thing I noticed that it said Esquimalt Lagoon is a place for sunbathing, not swimming, although people do swim there. Lastly, on the weekends, especially Friday night, food trucks can be found and they have some very good food. And I believe on Friday night, bands can be there too. So good food, fun music, and a sunny summer day, Esquimalt Lagoon can be a great place to be.